Okay, people, welcome back to another Foosh review. Tonight, I'm taking a look at the Mezco 112th Collective Joker Deluxe Edition. Now, I have a modest collection of Jokers. I, I've just always, for some reason, been drawn to the character. I guess I dig on chaos or whatever. It's the same reason I kind of gravitate towards Deadpool. You just never know what they're going to do next. And it's been that way since I was a kid. Maybe not for Deadpool. <laughs> Deadpool came later. But Joker, as a kid, he's visually interesting. He's comical. He's deadly. It's a little bit traumatic if you look too deep into it. Just always been something about Joker. But for whatever reason, I didn't get the first 112th Collective Joker. I don't remember if I wasn't into the line yet or or whatever popped up, I don't know. But it seems it worked out in my favor because of this release. I understand some of the anger out there of, you know, people getting the first release and then going, oh, why didn't they do this the first time? I, I couldn't tell you. Looking at the package, not the most exciting package in the world. I think with the Mezco exclusives, they just kind of, you know, they don't have to have a window and such. It's the same reason Bandai doesn't do it for their exclusives. I, they're already sold. I mean, <laughs> they're not on store shelves, so uh, to hell with it. On the side, yep, Jay. On the back, Ha 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 On the other end, yep, top 112th logo. Bottom, <laughs> the most interesting side of the box is the warnings, the legalese, the, well, there's no unreadables. There's a barcode though, but I'm gonna get this open and see what the hell I bought. I, at this point, I don't even remember what came with this set. Oh, it's coming back to me though with the multi-tier of accessories and parts and pieces. How the hell does this come apart? Oh, there we go. Oh. Can't forget that. Is this edible? Or is this the jacket? I thought it was the pack to keep moisture out of it. I should have known better though. That was huge. Oh no, it's a little leather trench coat. But all the accessories there in the bottom, uh, stand, and then the figure and its parts is in the top. Nope, the desiccant was in the other tray. Snack time. And there we go. <coughs> and there we go, all out of the box. And not the most dynamic action figure I've ever opened, but ooh, he's kind of scary. This is where I usually go into the sculpt, but really it's all cloth goods. And that's just Mezco. That's the 112th Collective. That's what you're going to get whenever you open it up. But it's all pretty well done. It's a pinstripe suit. The pinstripes in it look nice. The stitching, I just, it's the scale. It just looks a little bit large, but it doesn't drag your eye to it. In fact, I was just looking for something to talk about and that that's when I noticed it. I've been taking pictures for two hours and I never went, holy shit, I hate these seams. Yes, there's a lot of layers. Yes, it does hinder articulation a bit, which we'll get into here in a minute, but it does lay right for the most part. The sculpted parts like the shoes and the gloves, it stands out a little bit because of the glossiness. I can get away with the shoes. I just figure, you know, polished them up going out on the town. But the gloves, I was going to say that the textures or the sheen doesn't doesn't match between the clothes and the gloves and the shoes, but I, I just talked myself out of it. But get up to the head, oh, oh this is oh, worth the price of admission here. The sculpt on all five of the heads, but we're only looking at this one right now. The sculpt is amazing. It has that deviousness, that evil but playful kind of look to it. It just comes across perfectly here. Not even mentioning the paint. The eyes are well done. There's a glossiness over it so they didn't have to nail it perfectly because the gloss kind of hides it. It looks pretty good. He's kind of beady eyed. And then the glossiness of the lips. The wetness of the teeth. But it's the skin tone that catches me here. I was expecting just because you know I, I, I forget about stuff. I was expecting that stark white. Just bright white. Bright white. But this is more of a bleach skin tone. There's a translucent to it. Translucentness? It actually looks like flesh if <laughs> you were looking at bleached flesh. Now in the package he comes like this, suit, fists, this hat, and I like the hat, I like how it works with the rest of the suit, but I wish it had just a little bit more life to it. It just seems a little bit flat across, which I guess is the style of the hat. It's just, I don't know, I guess I'm used to a brim coming down a little bit. Maybe I'll try to heat it up, try to bring it down, but when I try to do it, it seems like it's a little bit harder to do than it's, you know, actually would be, but I don't know. I may try it. And then, like I said, there are a lot of layers here, and it kind of bunches up in the articulation. When I first got it out, I didn't really know where to bend the arms or which way to turn it or how far I could go. It's mostly in the shoulders. It doesn't really mess with the elbow. It's mostly right here. It bunches up. It's hard to manipulate up and out. You can get it there, don't get me wrong, but I feel like I'm dragging against the jacket. It is easy enough, and I think I actually prefer it with the jacket off. And I suck at this. I am no good at taking off cloth clothing and putting on cloth clothing. I, I just, I get a little frustrated. 
that may come across in this review, but I, bear with me. I think I prefer it this way. Yeah, I'm all for the old, you know, fully suited up Joker and such, but I keep having to fix the tie. It kind of, it likes to slide over to the side. It likes to just pull under the vest here. That's why they gave us the crowbar, right? But this way, it doesn't bunch up as much. It doesn't feel like I'm tearing at it. You can get up with the arms and such. And not only that, I like the contrast here. Yeah, the classic look has the jacket, but it's a different look, I feel. Although, as soon as I finish this review, I'll probably pop right in there, put the jacket right back on, put them on the shelf. But you can see the tiny little buttons here. It's not actually plastic. It's some kind of overlay. But it works well. I talked about the tie. It looks great. You can bring it out over the top, and it's an actual tie. That's easy enough just to tuck. I say easy enough. You gotta kind of work it in. And I could continue undressing. <laughs> but that's as far as I want to go. I don't want to... Well... I'm curious. There's no belt, there's no loops or anything, so this hides it pretty well. This is as far down as I'll dress him. But he does have some sculpted on socks. There's the band up at the top, and it's got the little bat logos on that. That's fantastic. It took me a few poses to realize, oh, that's green under there. What's, oh. For articulation, there's a dumbbell joint. There's a ball up in the neck, but the neck goes far, so far down that I, it doesn't really do a lot at the top. Down at the bottom ball, get great range of movement there. I don't think there's any kind of butterfly joint. I think it's just a hinge and swivel at the shoulder, but it does come up to 90. Can rotate it around until the cloth starts bunching, but that's all the way up. Hinge and swivel at the elbow comes up to about 90, and then it swivels. Swivel hinge swivel at the wrist. You can go side to side with it, and then turn it, and bring it around, and then you can go up and down. I do believe there's a mid-torso joint, but it doesn't give you much of anything. And then at the waist, there's a ball joint, it doesn't give you a lot either. So here we go with crunch. Boop. That's it. Back, a little bit, side, side. <laughs> Not a lot there at all. Hip goes forward uh, pretty much all the way. Back, out, there's a swivel there. Knee, if you let the pants ride up, it gets most of the way up. Looks like kind of a dumbbell joint, ball joint going down into the ankle. You can go back, forward, tilt, tilt. And I was gonna say toe, but there's no toe. I'd like to see a toe. For accessories, Joker comes with two fists. He comes with two grip hands. He comes with a right trigger finger. He comes with a splayed out left hand. And then he comes with a right hand with a card lodged between two fingers. And the hands come off easily. There's a rubberiness to them. There's a nice flex to it. And uh, that'll come into play here in a minute. Because he has a pistol with an extra, I'm going to say magazine. Is that wrong? Is it clip? Magazine? I don't know. I can never keep track of this. But a nice sculpt, silver, and then some purple on the grip. And then it comes with an extra. We've been seeing that a little bit. Uh, well, I haven't gotten all the figures so far. But with Batman, we got 10 Batarangs. So I can only guess you get an extra one of these because they're small and easy to lose. And this also slides on top. Bring it back pull it forward. He comes with a machine gun or a submachine gun. Nice sculpt to it. The silver paint up on top. And then there's a little bit of wear here and there. Again, little bullet up in here and it also comes with an extra one too. And both of those are fairly tight up in the gun. Now I mentioned the hand being soft. It's easy enough to put the gun in the hand. No problem whatsoever. And even though it isn't a problem because of the softness of the hands, the handle on this is huge. So you gotta kind of flex it way out to put this gun in his hand. He comes with a bullet blasting out of the gun effect. It's got a smokiness to the yellow that goes kind of clear and then you can actually see the little bullet on the end. And the little rod right there goes into the barrel of the gun and just works great. And it also goes on the other gun, no problem at all. He comes with a big hunting type knife, a tactical knife. It's just cast in black and then a silver edge down the blade of it. And then he also comes with a razor. Black on the handle, silver on the blade. Not really anything fancy here. Except it's actually articulated. You can open it up or you can close it all the way down. Uh, that is just a cool little thing that they didn't have to do, but it's in there. And both of those fit right into the grip hand. He comes with a bomb. It's that classical, comical type bomb where it sticks a dynamite, some wires, a timer, some copper. It's just really nicely sculpted and painted here. It, it stands out. He comes with a set of chattering teeth. Lots of colors here, but it doesn't really do anything. It almost looks like it's hinged back here, but it doesn't open up. This doesn't turn. And then he comes with a crowbar. Nicely sculpted. It's got a, you know, a crowbar look to it. It has some wear on it, uh, a lighter shade of gray, and then, of course, some robin blood on the end of it. And then the alternate heads. This is what gets me here. Out of the package, he has the grinning face with the hat, and then he has the I'm gonna do it look. He has the I am doing it look. He has the I'm about to get caught doing it look. And then he has the I got caught, but I don't regret a thing look. And to switch out the heads, you pull and... Eh, this is the most satisfying thing about the figure. 
it's almost like a double pop in there. Even when you put this head back on, there's a pop, and then there's a second pop. The look here, it's it almost looks like it's swallowing his neck. So if you take this and pop it one up, it looks a little bit long, but you get more movement to it. And the Joker looking a little bit awkward because of a long neck, I don't have a problem with that at all. Then the neck, which I'm kind of glad they did. I think they put the neck up here so they could get that awesome translucency to the skin all the way down to the neck, everything that's shown. It kind of sucks that the arms are stark, bright white. It doesn't really match if you want to go the no jacket look, but what you can do. And when it comes to some of the other heads, there's only one pop. Well, there was a double pop coming off, but it feels like when I put it on, it's only one pop and the neck stays up a little bit. There's no wrong way to display this, I think. And then he has the leather trench coat. I like it, but it's the same problem as the jacket. It adds another layer, and then it just kind of hinders articulation even more. And me being the amateur six inch action figure dresser I am, I can't quite get the shoulders all the way up and then the collar all the way down for that natural look to it. And then there's the stand. I love Mezco stands. I feel like they're the best quality stands out there. It keeps figures up in the air or standing or whatever you use it for. It's a very stable base. It's just weird that they turned the ha ha graphics sideways on it. I, I don't know why they didn't use it Forward. Here he is with the Toy Fair exclusive Ascending Night Batman. This totally works. They were made for each other. Maybe not era-wise. I'm looking for the punk Joker to go with this Batman, but then I'm looking for Sovereign Night Batman to go with this Joker. What have you done to me, Mezco? But if you're looking for a big crossover event of villains, here he is with the Mezco 112th Collective Red Skull. Here he is with one of the many Mattel DC Universe classic Jokers. And here he is with the DC Collectibles Icons Joker. And then for giggles, here he is with the NECA Dark Knight Joker. Finally, here he is with Gus. You Want to hear about my plans for Gotham? Nope. What do you mean, nope? Nope. Don't know. Don't care. <laughs> That's hilarious. Don't care about all the citizens of Gotham. Never said I don't care about people. I just don't care about your plan. Pete. Pete. Oh! How you feel about your little plan now? <laughs> Never mind. So at the end of the day, a damn fine addition to the Joker shelf. It's not a perfect figure. I've heard people talk about this uses a body that isn't as articulated as some of the later bodies. I wish there was more movement in the torso and the elbows. But being Joker, I, I'm not looking for super dynamic poses. He's not going to be doing kung fu. He's going to be standing there being a dick on my shelf. They did a good job of scaling down the cloth. The stitching, if you go looking for it, yeah, it's going to stick out at you. But if you're not looking for it, or if you're used to it with other Masco stuff, this is not going to bother you at all. I love all the extras. All the heads, I have a hard time deciding which head I want to use. I kind of wish I had two to go for a fully suited look and then, you know, hanging around the hideout look. But since it's just one, I'll probably put the jacket back on and put them back on the shelf and wait for Sovereign Night Batman and then have that pairing. Or I may pull them down in a week, strip them down, holding the... No, I'm not all the way down. Holding a bomb acting crazy, clothes all over the place. There are just so many options here, and I can appreciate that. I, well, I totally appreciate it. Now, like I said back at the first, if I had gotten the first version of Joker, I don't I don't even know what all that came with. But apparently, it was less than this. If I had gotten that one, I would be kind of pissed that I had to buy another one to get more accessories for it. But at the same time, I already said I would like to have two of them. I kind of wish I had that first one now. I'd have Jokers all over the place. Put them over here, put them over there. I, yeah, nothing wrong with that. As many jokers as I do have, I, this is kind of the standout at this point. It, and it may be a little bit of, oh, it's so new and shiny and I just opened it. It's so much better than all these other jokers I've had on my shelf for years. Maybe a little bit of that, but at the same time, uh, this is one of the best looking heads I have on that shelf now. Mm, let's go. You did good. So if you like the review, comment, like, subscribe. I'll catch you on the foosh.